morning, Bird. What are you doing with those live watches, Nuts? <laughs> <laughs> We're up pretty early this morning. Yeah, heading out to the sculpture park. Which I heard it's pretty cool. They have all kinds of things down there. <laughs> I've heard that it's pretty cool. People say like if you're coming here, you gotta do it. So. I think we have to check that off our list. It's like an underwater museum sort yeah. of thing, sculpture park. Yeah. Okay. And it's not super deep, I don't think. No, I think it's about eight meters. Yeah. I actually found some coordinates too, so we know where it is. <laughs> Hopefully they're right. Ready to drop? Ready. Dropping. Crack it. Cracker. It's good fill, almost two on a bar. It's our second week in Isla Mujeres, and after exploring by land for the last few days, we're itching to explore the Kool-Aid colored water. So we put out a call on the socials for things to do, and the Underwater Museum of Art popped up on our radar. On this fine Mexican morning, we're prepping ourselves to breathe underwater. Sierra, I need that. Can I have my dive light, please? <laughs> Can I have it, please? That's what I, I need. I need it to go diving. I know it makes a really good necklace, but I need it. No? Please? So we're gonna be diving in teams today. We're doing the morning dive, uh, and Kaz is gonna stay behind and watch the baby nugs. And then we're gonna come back, and then Grace will watch the baby nugs, and then Kaz will do a dive with us. So, team one, headed out. Oh, you got the necklace back? Got it. Okay, good. She wasn't happy about that. You ready to go? Yeah, let's do All this. All right, let's do this. Okay, we'll do a quick check. So we got two tanks, two BCs set up full of air. Weights, masks. Weights, gloves, masks. Extra weight. Two sets of fins. Dive watches. Dive, where's your dive watch? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and then we got our GPS so we can find the spot. We got a VHF in case we get into trouble. We also filled up with fuel. I think we're set. I think we're ready to go. Let's rip. Let's do it. Ready to go for a rip back? Oh, heck yeah. Out for a rip bun? Oh yeah. Just still for a rip out of your butt. Just still for a rip. You ready, friends? Ready. Uh, we'll see you out there. Yeah, kind of. It is on Navionics. Let's just say that I had a general idea of the direction and hope that the GPS coordinates I pulled off the internet were somewhat accurate. So off we went in search of a set of buoys about one mile from the southwest corner of the island. How hard could it be to find a bunch of sunken objects in water this clear, right? Well, it turns out to be a little harder than we thought. Plan B was to drag Tay around with Maggie 
in a makeshift search grid pattern. Tell you what, why don't you grab onto this line and I'll just pull you for real slowly for a little bit. Okay. Oh, jeez. A few minutes and partial drownings later, we finally spotted something. What do you see, Tay? Yeah, there's like five little ones right here. Okay. All right, so what do you see? You see a car right here? Yeah, there's a car right below those. Okay, great. Let's tie up to that movie then. We'll swim this way. Okay. This underwater art museum officially opened to the public in 2010. Nearly 800,000 tourists a year visit these waters, and the presence of so many was having a negative impact on the health of the natural reef, which surprisingly is still in really good health. The local head of Mexico's environment and natural resources collaborated with British sculptor Jason Bacares Taylor to create an artificial reef. Now that we found the dive site, I decided to run back and grab Kaza so she could join in on the fun. The sculptures were placed in a large, open sandy plain well away from the natural reef. Not only does this draw divers in and minimize impact on the natural reef, but also provides a completely new habitat where biodiversity can flourish. How'd we do today? That was pretty cool. What do you think about that? Really interesting. I like the beetle the most. You like the beetle the most? I think so. That was pretty fun. I like the large group of creepy people standing yeah. there. <laughs> All right. I think we found quite a few things. I think there's more. I think that there's more that we didn't see. Yeah, I think we need to look at a map and know what's out here. Yeah. All right, I'm going to help you get this gear up. All right. Let's do this. Earlier this morning, we were joking about how smoothly the systems on Delos were running. Well, we should have bit our tongues because right after that, of course, something broke. We were running the water maker and uh, we're making water because we can't drink the water here in Mexico. And so we've been running the water maker and that just like the low pressure pump, the feed pump, okay. the pressure just went to zero. And so I started up the generator. Yeah. Then the generator just threw uh, like a high exhaust temperature alarm, which typically means that the impeller failed, Okay. but it might also be like, it's generally, I think we have a restricted water flow somewhere. So I think the first thing I should do is check the sea strainer. Do you know what though? I've been noticing flushing the toilet that in the back one, that the to the, the water isn't coming in. Okay. As and also the AC just stopped working, which is really bad news. I just need to say again what bad news this is for us. With temps over 100 degrees Fahrenheit during the day, the prospect of the AC not working was even more terrifying than the toilets not flushing. I was hoping both problems would somehow be linked together. We're gonna check the sea strainer because okay. you know what? Have you noticed that your toilet is not putting out a lot of water? Well, yes. that one doesn't do it anyways. Yeah. But... No, I did notice I noticed, that. okay. So Kaza says the one in the back is yeah. not putting out a lot of water, so. Let's go into that. We'll go into engine room and check the sea strainer. Okay. Let's start the easy stuff first. So there's one sea strainer. Only one. Only one, because there's no through holes in this boat, which is pretty cool. So the way this boat works is all of the water comes in through this one through hole over here. And 
and so there's one seacock. Oh, geez. Is it I not can't even, close it. It's not even working. Okay. Well, that's interesting. What the sh is in there? Oh. We got some mega grub. Oh, oh gnarly. Oh, God. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> and I think the whole thing is clogged because I can't close that through hole. Either you go swimming under the boat. Oh, no. <laughs> Taking oh, one for the team. No. Or uh, we shove a stick down there and see if we can shove it out from the engine Just room. Shove through. your arm in there. I can't. It's like that. It's a oh, small hole. And okay. I already cut myself once. So we need a stick. We need uh, like a device. Um, well, there's like this table. Yeah. Ready? So this thing's open, right? Mm -hmm. It should be like flooding water. Yeah, like we should be sinking open, the right? boat right now. Yeah. Oh! Oh, you got it. There you go. There she goes. And now it'll close. Now it closes. I've been joking with Brian about how fun it is to sail a boat that's not yours. Uh -huh. Especially when nothing's gone wrong. I keep saying it's so nice, nothing's gone wrong or broken yet since I've been here. So I guess this is, I guess, problem number one that's ever happened. But it was a pretty easy fix. Well, we'll see, because we probably burned the impeller on the generator. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it shut itself down, but anytime it runs dry, those things like... Just burns it out. Okay, so now we gotta clean this thing. Yeah, blasting it as I lose it into the water. <laughs> That's not what we want to do. No. I'd have to go for another dive. Hey, that's the cleanest that's been in a while. Beauty. Now we just got to see if we f that impeller. Yep. Oh, there's, there's your my, tools. My tools. Get out, get in the hole. Alrighty. Let's see what your mechanic skills, woman. I can do this. I'll guide you through this. This will be, this is critical skills. There you go. Now let's twist the other one left. There you oh, go. There we go. Okay. Oh, she's toasty. Okay. So, uh, there, right there, is the water pump. Yep. So, what we need to do is loosen, get that belt off. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, we're getting there. Okay, now what we need to do is undo the hoses. Ah, hot, 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 hot. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's gonna be wasted? Yeah, with how hot everything is. I think there's some blades in there, but I think we're missing some blades. I think we're gonna be a little melted. If it's not, I'll be pleasantly surprised. Uh oh. And... Oh. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay, all of them are there. Let's pull it out and see if there's any like cracks and stuff in it though. Boing. Okay. So see that right there? Like that's, that's some it's melted. not bad, but yeah. it's just a little bit of fatigue. So we'll, we will go ahead and replace it. Might as well while we got it out. Yeah, to go through all this trouble and the knot would be silly. So by the way, the reason why we're running the generator at the dock is because the power here in Mexico is 60 hertz. And some of the critical boat systems like the washing machine and the desalinator and the dive compressor, they all need 50 hertz. And so when we're at the dock, in places like the U.S. and Mexico and Canada uh, and anywhere in the, the Americas, I think, then we just run the generator when we need to run those things. And I think the reason why this happened in the first place is because we've been running the AC off dock power. So the AC is 50, 60 yeah. hertz. But we've been running it for like two weeks straight since we've been here. In this little And so it's shallow. just sucked up yeah. all sorts of stuff and that's what clogged the filters. And now here we are. Yes, okay. Good. Finger that belt. Yeah, that looks pretty good. How's that feel? I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Okay, turn the seawater back on. Look at that sweat. Oh my god. It's so hot in here. Oh my gosh. She's on.
Get it? Yeah. Okay, should we give it a go? Let's see. Hopefully it cooled down enough. Change your first impeller on Delos. Yeah! Okay. I put my sweat and tears. You've earned, you've earned, tears. now you've earned use of, of electric winches. Okay. okay. Gotta do that's, your first impeller that's change. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go see if the AC will turn on. Yeah. Boom. 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 Let's try the water maker. Boom. Boom. There it is. Pressure's coming up now. That's a good sign. Thank goodness. <laughs> it's working! It's working. We did it! <laughs> With our chores finished, it was time to get off the boat and do what we do best. Namely, consume large quantities of tacos and margaritas. Looks like a group of vloggers. <laughs> One of the benefits of having Delos in a dock is we can walk right off the boat and minutes later find ourselves in the heart of Isla. We decided to take an afternoon stroll into the city to check out the sights and continue our eternal search for the best tacos. We got the quesadillas and the margaritas. I'm happy. Mm. What are you getting, Brad? Take quesadilla and tacos. Mm. Oh. Yeah, get in there. Life large. As sometimes happens when sailors get let loose, we made a big night of it, and it wasn't long until the shot started flowing. Oh my god! Next up on Delos, we descend into the Mexican underworld as we explore the largest underwater cave system in the entire world. Yeah, yeah, I won't use that clip anyway, don't worry. There you go. Do it. No, it's already started. It's already started. I think she's kind of just like, we're not going fast enough, so I need to do something to change that. I feel like one of these buttons does something here. My dad always told me to live high and go low. Yeah. But also Valley. to stay salty. Stay salty. Oh, jeez. <laughs> 